All right, good morning. Good morning, happy Tuesday. It's good to have you back. Speak to me quickly as you come in. Good morning, good morning, good morning. Hey, y'all. Good to see you on Facebook. Good to see you on YouTube. I want to be quick. I want to speak to all of you. I want to do all of that, but I want to make sure I honor your time. Get out of your way so you can have your day. You got a busy day. I do, too. I'm Pastor Sean Marshall. I'm back. Saturday, we started a conversation about the key to a happy new year. And we said that the key that you need is revelation. You don't need another resolution. You need a revelation. Right. Do me a favor. We are back this morning, Tuesday morning. Yesterday, we talked about how to get a revelation. And I share with you that God has a biblically established pattern for speaking to us, that God has a way of communicating with us, that we can actually hear God. We can know what God wants to reveal. So I shared that yesterday. Today, we're back. And I'm going to share with you the revelation that I believe God wants to, a specific area that God wants to reveal something to you in 2024. Now, he's going to reveal it to you, I believe, to help you maximize this year. So make sure that you're sharing this, that you are tagging someone, that you're letting them know that we're on. I'm going to go for a few quick minutes. I'm going to share this and get out of your way. So we talked yesterday about one of the ways in which God speaks is through his word. Remember, God is doing something. The the question is not whether or not God is doing something or God is revealing. The question is whether or not we're receiving. So we have to posture our hearts to receive, to perceive, and to receive what God is saying so that we can be prepared to respond because the revelation will require a response, all right? So we talked through that yesterday and I gave you a scripture. I gave you Jeremiah chapter one, verses five through eight. I asked you to meditate on that, to reflect upon that, to study that, to pray over that. And so I'm gonna come right back here today, Jeremiah chapter one, And I want to talk about what I believe God specifically wants to reveal to you. God, I believe, wants to reveal you to you. Okay? When we're receiving the revelation of God that we need for 2024, I believe that the Lord wants to reveal you to you. Jeremiah 1 and 5 says, before I formed you, this is God talking to the prophet Jeremiah. Before I formed you in the womb, I knew you. And before you were born, I consecrated you. I have appointed you as a prophet to the nations. Now, we know that God is talking to the prophet Jeremiah because we have hindsight. Remember, this is before Jeremiah prophesies. This is before the book of Jeremiah is recorded. This is before the book of Lamentation, which Jeremiah wrote, was recorded. Um, This is before, those who believe he wrote it, this is before um, anything is said by Jeremiah out of his mouth. So we have the historical knowledge that Jeremiah is a prophet, but Jeremiah does not know that he is a prophet. So God is having a conversation in verse five with Jeremiah to help him to know who he is. I want to submit to you that many times we struggle because we really don't know who we are. I want to submit to you that part of what frustrates our next move is that God is trying to give us some direction and some instruction, but we don't know he's talking to us. I don't know if you ever been somewhere and somebody's talking and and you kind of go, oh, you talking to me? Who, who, who are you talking to? I, I didn't know you were talking to me, right? 
I, I, oh, oh, you're talking to me. I think a lot of times God, the issue is not whether or not God is speaking to us. The issue is if we don't know who we are, then we won't know some of the things that God is saying to us because we'll think that when God starts saying those things, that that's out of the context of who we are, right? So if I'm standing somewhere, uh, service is getting ready to start at Salem Baptist Church, Chicago, and someone says, are, are you ready to, 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 to sing the first song of worship? I, I'll just know ain't nobody talking to me because I am not a singer. Do, do you hear what I'm saying? Do, do you understand what I'm saying? If somebody's car breaks down and they come to me and they say, Pastor Marshall, we need you to fix this person's car. Their car broke down. I'm I'm not going to respond to that. It's like, who are you talking to? I don't know the first or the last thing about fixing a car because I don't perceive that to be who I am. Here's what we need to know. What is the Lord, what is the word of the Lord in this verse? He says, before I formed you in the womb, I knew you. So here's what you need to know. God knew you before you knew you. God knew you before your parents ever got together. God knew you. God had an awareness of your identity, and then he formed you based upon what he knew about you. God formed you, fashioned you, gave you the personality that you have, gave you the experiences, set you up for the experiences, ordained what family you'll be born into, where you'll be born, the time you'll be born, the geographic location you'll be born in your ethnicity, your story, all of that, the Lord formed it because he had a knowledge of who you are. So you had an identity before you had a birth certificate. You had an identity before you had a birth certificate. So we're not trying to create our identity. What we want to do is we want to discover what it is that the Lord knows about us and what it is that the Lord knew about us before we were ever even born. Because if we can know what God knows about who we are, then we can get up and be responsive to when God speaks to us because we can go and do who we be. If I don't know who I be, then I won't know what to do. If you're hammering a nail into a wall and you need a tool, I'm not going to respond if I don't know I'm a hammer. If I think I'm a screwdriver, I'm going to sit and wait and miss the moment to be used in the way that I was designed. So God, I believe, wants to clarify, to reveal to you, you, to help you know you, because I formed you. I know you. I'm God. I saw you before your mama and daddy ever even knew their names, right? God wants to reveal you to you. Secondly. God wants to expose your limiting beliefs. What is Jeremiah's response? He says, verse six, then I said, oh, Lord God, behold, I do not know how to speak because I am a youth. He said, God, I can't do that. I'm too young. The challenge that we have is not simply knowing what God knows about us. It is God dealing with with the things that come up in our mind and in our hearts, those things that we think disqualify us from being who God has called us to be. All of us have it. I'm too young. I'm too old. It's too late. I don't have enough money. I don't have enough time. I'm not smart enough. I'm not good looking enough. I'm not articulate enough. I don't have enough education. I don't have the credentials. I don't have the experience. I don't have the connections, right? We all have limiting beliefs. I come from this type of family. I've struggled with this addiction. I have this issue. I have this sickness. I have this struggle. I have this problem. And all of those things, watch this, become the reasons why we tell God that we can't be who he created us to be. So God is speaking to you. And I believe that the Lord wants to reveal things to you in such a way that when he starts speaking, your limiting beliefs come up. Because when your limiting beliefs come to the surface and God exposes them, the next thing the Lord wants to do is the Lord wants to challenge your limiting belief. 
Because in Jeremiah 1 and 7, the Lord says, do not say I am a youth because everywhere I send you, you shall go. And all that I command you, you shall speak. I love this because God says, everywhere I send you, you shall go. Because I don't know what you're talking about, but I know who you are. And because I know who you are, I'm getting happy on a Tuesday morning. Because I know who you are, I'm going to speak to you in such a way that what I speak to you and the direction that I give to you and the revelation that I speak to you and the words that I give to you and the vision that I give to you is going to run counter to those lies, those false beliefs, those limiting beliefs that keep you from experiencing what I've created you to do. So I'm, I, don't, I know you think you're a youth, but stop saying that. God will challenge you by correcting what you say about yourself. God wants to deal with what you said about yourself. God wants to deal with how you think about yourself. God wants to deal with how you've sabotaged yourself. God wants to deal with how you've limited yourself. God wants to deal with how you have discouraged and disqualified yourself. And God's going to tell you, that's nice. I'm sending you anyway. And God wants you to know that he will be with you. It's the best news in the text. Do not be afraid of them for I am with you. So watch this. Yeah, I know God says, I'm calling you because I know you. I'm revealing you to you. Jeremiah says, I can't do that, God, because I'm young. God says, don't say that you're young because I know who you are and I'm sending you. But even if you feel like you're too young, guess what? I'm God and I'm going with you. Even if you feel like you're not smart enough, guess what? I'm omniscient and I'll be with you. I'll give you the words to say. Guess what? Even if you feel like you're not connected, I'll be with you. And I will disturb someone's sleep to bless you if I have to. I will be with you. I'm God. So you just go. And as you go, I will God. Ooh, I got to let y'all go. That's, that's feeling too good to me. All right. So. God wants to give you revelation to help you know who you are. It's time for you to be you. What if you have not been you yet? What if the challenge is not issues externally? What if the challenge really is that you have yet to embrace the truth of God concerning you and who he's created you to be? It bears implication. Because the fact that Jeremiah was able to say yes, he was able to prophesy and he was able to warn and he was able to bear witness even to Israel's rebellion in ways that leave us with scripture and with encouragement and with text that has lasted for ages. Okay, His obedience to who God called him to be helps us even now today. You'll never know how far reaching your agreement with God can be about who you are. So this is practically, remember I wanted to give you practices. So this is what I want you to meditate on. I hope you got your journals out, your notes out, okay? This is what I want you to reflect on after this message this morning. Number one, question number one, this is what I want you to pray into, engage with God about. God, what are you revealing to me about who you created me to be? What are you revealing to me about who you've created me to be? What do you need me to hear? What do you need me to know about me? What gifts are you revealing to me? What abilities are you revealing to me? What unique aspects of my identity do you need me to see? What difference do I make when I show up? How am, how am I uniquely designed? You said in your word that I'm fearfully and wonderfully made. How am I made differently than my counterparts, than my contemporaries? How am I different? How am I wired different? 
How am I configured differently? Speak to me, Lord, about what you're revealing to me about who you created me to be. Question number two, what lies, thoughts, and beliefs have limited me from receiving what God says about me? What lies, thoughts, and beliefs have limited me from receiving what God says about me? What have I believed about myself that makes me go, God, no, you can't do that. I, I'm, I'm, I'm too this, I'm too that. I'm not enough this, I'm not enough that. I have this in my story. I don't have this in my story. What are the things that have come up in my soul whenever God tries to get me to move in ways that are consistent with who he says I am? Okay, so what are those limiting beliefs? And then question number three, what does God have to say to my limiting beliefs? What does God have to say to my limiting beliefs? What does the word say? What does the word say? Does the word say that I'm more than a conqueror through him who loves me? Does the word say that if any man be in Christ, he is a new creature, old things have passed away, behold, all things become new? When the shame tries to keep me from being who God created me to be, does the word say, Romans 8 and 1, there is therefore no condemnation to those who are in Christ Jesus? What does the word say? But my God shall supply all of your need according to his riches and glory by Christ Jesus. What does God have to say to me in his written word? And what does God want to put in my spirit about my limiting beliefs? How can I deconstruct the thoughts that have held me back, the feelings that have held me back. And then finally, I love this one. What does it look like for me to know that God will be with me? How can I envision a 2024 where every single day of the every single week of every single month of, of the entire year, what does it look like for me to walk in the confidence of me being me because I know that no matter what, if I'm being me, then God is with me and he's being God. What does that look like? What is it like for God to be with me when I answer the call to do what he's spoken to me about for years, when I respond to what he's saying to me? All right. Let me do those one more time. Question number one, God, what are you revealing to me about who you created me to be? What are you revealing to me about who you created me to be? Question number two, what lies, thoughts, and beliefs have limited me from receiving what God says about me? All right. Question number three, what does God have to say to my limiting beliefs? What does God want to say about it? And then question number four, what does it look like for me to know, to know that as I'm being me, that God is with me and he's being God. Father, speak to us today about who we are. We pray in the name of Jesus that you would destroy every false belief, every lie, every trick, every scheme, every plot of the enemy to keep us from walking in the confidence of our created identity. And Lord, settle in us, settle in our hearts to know what it is that you already knew about us before we were ever even born and convince and convict us of your presence that's going with us in Jesus' name, amen and amen. All right, if you haven't already done it, let people know that we're doing this. Subscribe to the YouTube channel. You can go back, you can watch yesterday's message. You can go back over Saturday's message if you want to. I love y'all. Have an amazing day. Take care. I pray that God reveals things to you. Take notes. Let's see you tomorrow. Tomorrow morning, Wednesday, 